Kepar was a librarian. Uh, he was the most uh, influential outdoor writer of his period. And he conglomerated what he knew into this book, which is the book of camping and woodcraft. And almost any question that you have still, a hundred and plus years later, can be answered in here. And a few years ago, or a year or so ago, a good friend of mine came into possession of the only known Kephart designed knife. And then my good friend Mark Zaleski, who runs Knife Magazine, brought it down here and let me cut something with it. And when I first had it, I went, damn, a hundred years, never been sharpened, and it wants to cut. And the reason I got excited over this rather unprepossessing looking knife is the subtleties in this blade are incredible. And I've always felt that a relatively flat handle gave the best way of figuring out how to index, index the blade so that you know exactly where the blade is. And they were handmade at the Cole Cluster Brothers factory in Pennsylvania. But it's a doubly convex blade with a, uh, a nice tapered tang and it feels live in your hand. It, it has a great feel, great balance, and it just works. I want everybody to experience what I've experienced with this blade, because it works. This is the um, K-Bar iteration of the um, iconic Kephart knife. And they have been very careful to do as good a job, as, as get it as close as possible as anybody can get to a knife that was in production, hand forged one by one in a fairly primitive manufacturing facility where people were still pounding them out with a hammer. And it has the nice relief at the top, it's full height, full height ground, which gives it a very slicey, a, a, a tremendous amount of slice. It has a slightly tapered tang, just like the original, which helps for the balance. It, indexes extraordinarily well and there's no place you're going to get hot spots you can work this knife for hours uh, many of the copies of the Kephart are based on the one at western north carolina university because it was the only one anybody knew about and it doesn't look like this anymore because it was sharpened to death uh, but this one is based off the only known example outside the museum and that knife is virtually pristine so this is as close as I think anybody can get to the original Kephart.
I'm Patrick, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about Holtzbrook and the Olmike hatchet. Holtzbrook's axe heads are hand forged at the facility located just outside of Norrköping in southern Sweden, which has been in operation since 1697. Each head is struck around 70 times to create the right shape and density. The head is made of Swedish carbon steel and has a 1 inch or 2.5 centimeter hardened and tempered zone with a hardness of 55 Rockwell C, which creates a durable and sharp edge even after many sharpenings. The American hickory handle is hand sanded and oiled with several coats of linseed to condition and protect the wood. The Holtzbrook All Mic is our all purpose hatchet and our best seller. It is intended for tasks such as making kindling, doing light clearing, and for any number of backcountry or landscaping jobs. It is ideal for carrying in your pack or being worn on a belt. This lightweight item has an axe head weight of 1 pound or 450 grams and a total weight of 1.75 pounds or 795 grams and a handle length of 16 inches or 37.5 centimeters.